the book of Proverbs. Chapter 6, verse number 6 to 8. I'm going to read from... I'm going to read from TPT version. TPT. Let us read together. Two, three, go. You have the TPT. No. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. No, my Sunday. When you are feeling lazy, are you feeling lazy now? This word is for you. Go to the end, you sluggard. When you are feeling lazy, come and learn a lesson from the, this tale of a tiny end. The title of message today is Decentralized Kingdom of Heaven, School of the Ends. Decentralized Kingdom of Heaven, School of Ends. Is it difficult to understand? I'm not talking Oxford English, you know, simple English. Decentralized Kingdom of Heaven, not centralized, huh? What we have today is all centralized. Is that right? Bang is centralized. Andrew may not like this message. Everything is control. Everything is, you need to do KYC. What is KYC? Know your customer. They want to do KYD. Know your developer. KID. Know your ID. Everything is exposed. That's why they come with PDPA. Data Privacy Protection Act. Why they come up with all this? Because somebody's buying data. They're stealing, selling data. Data are being sold worldwide. Information is no more privacy. It is now for public sale. Wholesale sometimes. Banks buy data wholesale. And insurance companies buying data. Some of you are sitting here, insurance agents. Joy now will say amen. They buy data and they use the data to make calls and connections. So your privacy is at stake. Not a private privacy anymore. But God's original plan is this. Come on. I hope you are here, alive. Is God alive? Our God is alive, right? But God's original plan is this. Exodus 19.9. Let's read this. I'll come back to Proverbs in a short while. Exodus 19.9. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. You there? So God came in a thick cloud and spoke. The people may hear when people that when I speak to you, people will hear. Behold, when I come to you in the thick cloud, the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. You there? So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in, fire, in it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of the furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, like we sing today morning, Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice. Somebody say, God speaks by a voice. He doesn't speak in, in enigma, in all those things that are not clear. He speaks clearly by a voice. Amen? So in the midst of all the things, we must be able to hear him clearly. That's why we keep on emphasizing every generation must hear God, must hear God, must hear God, must hear God. What is God speaking to you? Why am I why I'm sending fresh word? Many times I send a word out and that word carries you through. 
Amen. Because that's God's plan. Is to give us a word for the now. It's called the word for the now. Though many of you don't pay attention. Some of you read it casually. Others pay real attention. As if this is your life. How do you pay attention to God's word? Because your life is held by his word. Amen. Come on. We are created by him, right? The Bible says by his word, he created all things and bring it to existence. Amen. Give me Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read this. New King James Version. I'll come back to you here because I'm going to crisscross some scriptures so that you understand what I'm saying. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 1. Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Amen. Continue. Grace to you, peace from our God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go on, read, read together with me. Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. God already blessed us. You don't need to ask for blessing. But do you know that many Christians waste time asking for blessing? Oh, you are the, you are the sanctified ones. Good ones. The good breed. Eh? The God blessed one. Is it true? Don't, don't ask, me for, ask me for prayer or blessing. This day henceforth. He says, blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every special blessing. He chose us in him before the foundation of the, of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. In order for you to remain blessed, you should be holy. Correct or not? If you want to be blessed perpetually, the essence of it or the byproduct of being blessed is because you live a holy life without blame before Him in love. That means you are blameless before God. There's nothing that you can be found in you that is that is any of spot or wrinkle. Is that right? Is it true or not? We are blameless before the throne. Nothing can spot you. So today, I need you to quickly evaluate your life as I'm preaching. Is there areas of your life that, is, that has any spot or wrinkle? Correct it immediately. Don't wait until tomorrow. Correct it immediately. Ask the Holy Spirit to deal with your heart now. Not tomorrow. Because the longer we procrastinate, the root will go in. You know what I'm saying? Bitterness has a root. That's why the Bible calls it root of bitterness. Give me that scripture, if you find it. Root of bitterness springing up, defiled many, it says. It's called root. Root, everything that we do has a root. Yes or no? Well, the scripture is there. One of you can help me with that scripture. Bitterness has a root. Is that right? Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. That means the grace of God is for you to go up, not fall short. Amen? Grace of God is to take you from one level to another level to go higher. But sometimes you realize when people, the more they draw closer to God, the more certain bad things begin to happen. Why? Because it's something called the fall short. Fall short to the glory. Give me an amplified version or message Bible. Read it here carefully. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back from fails to secure God's grace. Is unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. <clears throat> That's why we constantly remind you. You understand? We constantly send message, word, to realign, to reaffirm, to readjust your faith. Not to bring condemnation. God's word is not to bring condemnation. But oftentimes, Christians, especially Christians, they are sitting in church. The moment they hear the word of God, 
they will think that somebody is judging them. Are you all so quiet? Is it true or not? The moment the word of God is coming strong, the first impression or the first perception you will have is somebody is talking about me. I think somebody sent an email to that. That's why Sunday is preaching like this. It's targeted message. Somebody must have WhatsApp him in the morning. You think I have nothing to do, is it? Listen to all the rubbish. I, for one person, I don't like to hear people telling me about another person. You better know me well. I don't want to hear your report. I couldn't care less. Because your report can be biased. You know now. Your judgment can be wrong. That's why your perception can derail what God is saying. I'd rather hear from God. If God is saying it, His final word is final. The finality of God's word matters most. Are you listening to me? I don't care what the doctor's report says. I don't care what you tell me about another person. It doesn't change my perception. Can you and I live like this? If you live like this, you live above the rest. You live by God's word. Because nothing can change your perception. That's why whenever I hear some people talking, I'll take it for the pinch of salt. Because I want to hear what God is saying. God must have his final word. It doesn't matter what the condition of the nation can be. I want to hear what God is saying. So what you heard is of God. C-O-I-B-I-D Corruption of very intense disrupted. Hallelujah. COVID-19 has come. Corruption very intense in corruption of very, very intense disrupted. Let me find out a little way I will tweak it and come up with something else. I'm good at this. So you all can think along. Let's tweak it and then come up with something. Send it out across in Facebook. They know that Aga reigns. Amen? Amen? So you must know that everything has a root. I made it favor in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness or hatred shoots forth causing trouble and Bitter torment, and many become contaminated and defiled by it. That's why you cannot be contaminated by anything else except by the Word of God. The Word of God is contagious, more contagious than COVID 19. You know what I'm saying? Faith is contagious. Say after me my faith is contagious, my zeal is contagious. Zeal, Z E A L. Is contagious, or some of you say Z. You can say it Z, you can say it Z, it's both is correct. Contagious. Look at somebody next to you and say, My faith is contagious, be careful. No sanitizer can, can dilute that. Sumi, you'll, you'll be out of business. You cannot sell sanitizers and sanitize faith. You can only sanitize fear. Faith. Cannot be sanitized. Faith can only be mobilized. Faith can only be deputized. Faith can only be equalized. Faith can be empowered. Faith becomes con contagious. Amen? So I want to draw some principle out from the school of the ends in a short while. Are you there? So God said here, having been predestined, you are blessed. He chose us before the foundation. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Verse number 5, let's read. Having predestined us, adoption as sons by Jesus Christ in himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the, pre ple to the praise of his glory, by his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. He made to bound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. I want to get the Chinese translation going, but not now. I want to consolidate some things before the Chinese translation comes up. Because we need to reach the Chinese people. You listening? 
And I want to have a team of people who can help me monitor this, who are listening, and how we want to monitor those words going out to reach them. Until that happens, I'm not going to have Chinese translation. Because why should I be shouting and screaming and some people are listening to the word in YouTube and don't even know what's happening. This is a time for us to monitor. It's called merit. Are you listening? I'm sure that there are some Tamil speaking people are listening to this video in YouTube. Our YouTube was hacked. A lot of the old or well, some of you do not know. Do you know we are using a new link now? Do you know or not? Or you don't know. That means you are not alert. Even if somebody strip you naked, you also don't know. Yes, I'm naked. Huh? Other people spot you, then only you know. Hey, you cannot be like this. The Bible says, be so bad, be vigilant. That means that uh, you are watching the YouTube and you don't even know that somebody is looking at your face through the open camera. How ignorant Christians can be. Please, uh, repent. It means you are watching the YouTube and you don't even know our YouTube channel is different. Now we are using Select Arrows channel. We are not using KACC channel that used to be. Because our videos are all removed. There are some Arab videos are there. You don't even know this. How sad it is. Caleb, now you know why you are suffering? Because Caleb is alone there. You know why? We don't have people who can help him. Because many of you do not know what's happening. You are like the people in the book of Acts. They all came together. But they do not know why they came together. I hope you are not like this. Huh? Please pay attention to what's happening. Don't do your own things. Amen. These people are working very hard. The Facebook team, Dashini and the team. And then YouTube there. Caleb is putting it up. Please pay attention. You must know what is happening. If you don't look after this, how can we influence and impact people out there? Are you there? Somebody asked me, can we have the Chinese translation? So I've been thinking about it. Two reasons why I have stopped. Number one, because it disrupts the flow. The person who's translating has to be sharp enough, strong enough to flow with me well. Otherwise, it disturbs me. Number two, we need to be trained properly. Number three, what is our method of using YouTube to reach the people? How are we doing it? You see, some of you don't even know the channel has been, has been changed. That shows that you're not ready. Why you look like this? Shall I continue or shall I stop this message? Am I making sense to you? If God is going to upgrade and update us, then we must be vigilant. We must be strong. If people ask you, can you explain to me in three words about your church? You must be able to say, strongly it impacts their life. Touching God is our passion. Changing lives is our priority. Very simple to explain. Explain to me three words about your pastor. Can you say? Don't know. You think first. Huh? You don't have time. When Daniel be appeared before Belshazzar, he spoke exactly as he was hearing. You understand? That's a world class leader. As he's speaking, heaven was speaking. Heaven was speaking. He is speaking. There was synergy between heaven and earth. Are you listening? He opens his mouth. Heaven is speaking through his vocal cord. Are you that kind of leader? Can you become like that? That means you have the word of the now in your mouth all the time. 
You can speak, preach, pray, prophesy. Any time of the day you have a message. You will not be mumbling and fumbling. Do not know what to say. If you are like this. You will never be able to influence and impact others. Nobody wants to follow someone who is sluggard. That's why I am coming to that word. So we have been redeemed. Having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. Verse number 9. Which he purposed in him that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Somebody say fullness of time. This is the fullness of times. That he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Everything is going to be gathered in Christ. But he needs qualified people to do this. Are you that qualified people? All things will be gathered, Bala. Business, finance, Andrew. You are in business world. You are in, in media. Exposed into singing. All things will be gathered together. Marian is in education. All things will be gathered together. You are in fashion, in arts. All things will be gathered together. Why? Because God is looking for his key man to become that gatherer. Are you the key man? Are you that man that God is looking for? That's why when Daniel stood before Belshazzar, he said, we have heard about you. Are you that Daniel? Are you, are you, are you getting this? That is God's decentralized plan. Go back to Exodus. Everything he wants together in one man. But something has gone wrong. Exodus chapter 19. Go back there again. Exodus 19. Are you all reading this? Exodus please. In chapter 18, chapter 19, verse 9. Did you read verse 9? Did you read verse 9? Just now, did we read verse 9? Uh, give me verse 19, verse 18. Chapter 19, verse 18. Give me verse 18. Let's read this. And the Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Verse 19. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered by him, by his voice. Verse 20. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, Sinai and... On top of the mountain, the Lord called Moses to the top mountain and Moses went up. Are you following? Give me verse 20, chapter 20, verse 1. Chapter 20, verse 1. This is, God spoke all these words saying. Then God said to Moses, you speak with us and I will hear. Verse number 19. Give me verse 19. Exodus 20. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. This is where centralized came in. But God's original plan is to speak to individual. Are you, are you all looking at this? God wants to speak to you, speak to you, speak to you. Speak to Marian, speak to Jude, speak to everyone individually. That's God's original plan. That's decentralized. But today, it has become centralized simply because people do not know how to connect with God. That day is coming. My job is to equip you so that in your God-given given domain, you can become the kingpin. My job is to equip you, empower you, give you all the spiritual, uh, what do you call that, empowerment that is needed, so that when you go into your domain, like Esther, you can speak. Athas, King Athas, Ahasuerus will listen. Amen. And at the sound of Esther's ma word, what's his name? The one who was hung. 
Haman was hung. Because Esther spoke. Esther positioned herself and preached. Are you in that place? Talk to me. Are you in that place? This is why the church ecclesia is all about. When we come together, if you want to see, the original plan is God wants to speak to his people. Yes or no? Can you hear God every day? Amos, can you hear God every day? Let me ask Keith. Keith, can you hear God every day? Not sure. Let me ask Sumi. Can you hear God every day? Anybody here not hearing God every day? It means it's disaster. <laughs> Very dangerous because you are still on a centralized government. That's one the reason why everything that you see in the world today is centralized. But today, blockchain is decentralized. They are moving things in this decentralized because that is God's original plan. You think blockchain is devil, is it? No. God is doing something behind the scene. Blockchain technology. When they invented cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and all that. God is behind the scene. He's up to something. You know God is working behind the scene. Because if you search the scripture and find out, this is God's plan. But let's find out what happened. Are you, are you there? Let's find out what actually gone wrong. Go back to Proverbs chapter 6 again. Let's read. TPT version. Read it together with me in your phone. Because the TPT version is not here. When you are feeling lazy, come and learn a lesson from this tale of a tiny end. Yes, all of you lazy bones. Are you a lazy bone? I hope you are not. Ask you, when was the last time you read the Bible? Didn't read. Do you not consider you lazy bones? When is the last time you pray? Too, too busy, other things. No time to seek God. As far as God is concerned, you are not learning anything. You're, you are busy doing other things, but lazy for God. Oh, there are repentant people here. I can see your face. You are too busy doing other things, but you don't have time to study His word. And then you will say things like, only pastors can do this. Do you think I've, I got all the luxury time from morning to night to sit in the house and study the word? I wish I have. I know some of you are praying that you don't need to go anywhere. Just sit from morning to night, read the word, read the word, send the word out. I know you are trying to centralize me. And then, so that you can draw from me, I'm the HQ. And then you will do your own things. How dangerous you can be. You know what I'm saying? I wish I can have morning tonight just sitting, studying, praying, sitting, studying, praying. Now, that's not our job. Our job is to become relevant out there. Amen? Amen. We have time to study and draw the word of God. So that we can go out there and impact our domain. If you are in media, impact the media domain. If you are in business, impact the business domain. If you are in education, impact the domain. Execute God's word. In that area. Hallelujah. You understand? So that you can become the Joseph in that place. The Daniel in that place. Are you the Daniel that God is looking for? You are in that place. Because you are in that place, no corruption will come in there. You didn't hear me? Nothing can pass through. No wickedness can pass through because you are there. No corruption will pass through because you are there. Amen? No ra racial, racial prejudice uh, can pass through because you are there. Are you listening? Because you, you, you are a man who love God, love truth. You can give equal distribution. Doesn't matter what race, what color. 
you will not say we Indian, we Chinese. You will say we love people. Come on. We love human nature. Anyone who loves truth and righteousness, we will support them. We will give them the education, the support that is needed. Will it not be like that? Or you will say we Indians, you know. We Chinese people. No, we don't operate this way. Why? Because we have a mission. Yes, all of you lazy bones, come and learn from the example of the ant and enter into wisdom. It says what? Then the ants have no chief. Look at it, following verse. The ants have no chief. Can I draw a few principles from here? That means the ants don't have to be monitored. You? All? Are you coming or not? Need to be monitored. Have you cleaned your house? Then you do. Make up your bed. Ah, why me? Throw the rubbish. Why not cha cha? Clean the kitchen. What is he doing? I also do. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Listen to me. Lead worship. Why every week me? I'm preaching every week. Do I complain? You ask me to pray for you every day. Do I complain? What gives the right for you to complain? You think Papa every week following, follow up, Paul? How are you, huh? How's church? Did you preach well? Huh? Did you pray? Did you read the word? Did you give your tithe? Offering how? Huh? Buy me durian, okay? Buy me duck. Does he monitor me every day, every week? But for some of us here, I pray that you repent. If we, if we don't go strong and push you, you will still be in your comfort zone. Some of you, if I don't push you, let's take back the hell. Go! You will look like hell. You will have things growing. Unnecessarily bulgy, bulky looking. Too much carbo. And nothing is burning. Because nobody is monitoring you. The scripture says the ants have no chief. But yet the ant was doing what he's supposed to do. The ants had no boss. You are your own boss. I know, Timothy, who is your boss now? God is the boss. Isn't it, Bala? Who is the company CEO? God. So, he is the CEO. Does the CEO monitor you every day? <laughs> For you, Paul. Does God monitor you every day? Paul? No. I saw the scripture, it really, I jumped out, you know. That's why the title of today's message is Are you going to graduate from decentralized, sorry, centralized to decentralized, become decentralized, and from the school of the ants? Ants have a school. They have no chief, they have no boss, they have no manager. If everybody like this, huh, we will have a better place to live. The world will be a better place to live. We don't have to monitor them. We don't have to ask them for accountability. They will know how to show accountability. They know how to pray. They know how to preach. They know how to prophesy. They know how to do the things correctly. You don't have to ask them. They know what to do. They are proactive believers. It's called the breakthrough believers. Are you the breakthrough believer? Say to me, I'm a breakthrough believer. I don't have to be monitored every day. Nobody need to be monitored. Nobody like to be monitored. I don't like to be monitored every day, you know. Amen? But you, you must know what to do. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you do? You wake up in the morning, you say, thank you Lord for, the, for, to, for today. Like uh, Paul Yonggi Cho, the, the largest uh, church in Korea, South Korea, 
uh, Yonggi Cho, Dr. Yonggi Cho, you know what he say? Every morning he get up, he say, Holy Spirit, I'm ready, let's go. That's how you pray. Holy Spirit, I'm ready. You are going out, let me join you. So the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest, so he joined the Holy Ghost. And whatever the Holy Spirit is getting involved, you are involved. And because the Holy Spirit is involved, you are involved, you will become a great partner. Every domain can be taken. Every business can be taken over. You can pursue, overtake, recover all. Are you listening? You will recover all. But the thing is, we don't associate with the Holy Ghost. We do our own things and when we are in trouble only, we call God. Are there repentant souls here? When we are in trouble only, we say, Lord, help me now. So long, sire. God will say, you, every time you sluggard. You're busy doing other things. And then when you need me, only you call me. That's why I told you this morning, your eyes must be upon the house of the Lord. One of the things that David did when he became a king is he built God's house. You remember? One of the, one of the, one of the things about the heart of, of David was, David was living in a nice house and he saw God's house is in the tabernacle. He said, how can God live in a tabernacle when I'm living in a nice home? Do you know that or not? You know what David did immediately? He said, let's build God a house. So that he will not be moving from one tent to another tent. God saw David's heart. He said, this man is after my own heart. My heart is like this. I don't know about you. That's why for me, the house of God is the top priority. Not my house, not my life. My own things first, then God's house later. If you live like this, you are in trouble. God's house is always secondary. My life first. My family. My work. That's why I don't have a ministry. Somebody asked me the other time, what's the house ministry? I cannot answer. What? Ministry? That pastor was so shocked because he was thinking, what kind of pastor are you? I'm asking how's ministry, I cannot answer. I say, I cannot answer because I'm not living for ministry. Amen? For me, God is my life. God is ministry. What ministry are we talking about? Especially Tamil pastors. A pretty ministry now, what is it? Ministry, what is it? Ministry, what is it? Ministry, what are you? You know what I'm saying? There's no ministry house, ministry running. Every time I see a Tamil pastor, they do not know what else to ask you. Every Tamil pastor I've met is house ministry. Why don't they ask, how are you? Very spiritual, huh? You don't believe me? Ask the pastors here. Pastor, is it true or not? Pastor, is it true or not? Tell me, I need support here. 100% true. You ask any, you ask any Tamil minister, I do not know why they cannot ask, you know, how are you, pastor? How are you doing? How's your life? How's ministry? First question is, how's ministry? Do I look like a ministry board? Why can't we learn to live, you know? How are you? How's your life? How's, how's your life doing? All well. First thing, house ministry. Please, for heaven's sake. We're not living for ministry. Do you know what I'm saying? Please, live a life. Live a life, not a religious life. Going around ministry. If, if no ministry means, you see, there are pastors sitting here. These are all pastors. Just because I didn't call you Pastor Jude doesn't mean you're a failure, no. Pastor is just a title. What we want is function. All of us are pastoral. We must be able to take on God's assignment and do it. No need to be monitored. That's why the end has no boss. The end has no manager. They know what to do. Come on. Do you know I can sit in the, at the sound desk and do the things. Just like exactly what Caleb is doing. 
I can build website. Whichever department you put me in, I can excel well. Because Daniel, oh my goodness, you people are not here. That's why I said, you better be in the same page as me. You better be. Are you with me? Daniel, chapter number 6. Verse number 4. Maybe we can read verse number 2. Maybe verse number 1. Because you all don't have Bible. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 set traps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors of the whole whom Daniel was one. And that the set traps might give, them, give account to them. So that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself. Somebody say this Daniel. Distinguish himself. Above the governors. Can you distinguish yourself? Tell to me, I have a distinguished spirit. Distinguished spirit. You are above the rest. Anytime you, you sit down and talk to contractors, you are seen to be excellent. Anytime you talk to salespeople, you are seen to be top. Are you following? Anytime. I have gone to so many of my sales. Customer make a comment. You must be one of the top people in your company. Are you the boss? They ask me, I'm the boss. No? Many times, I finish mattress and come out of the room. They ask me, are you the boss of the company? I say, if I'm the boss, you'll be working. You just laugh. And <laughs> it's true. Listen. You are distinguished above the rest. And the second thing is you have the spirit of excellence. You see? Because an excellent spirit was in him. I pray that an excellent spirit will come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be sluggish. You will not be sluggard. You will have an excellent spirit over your life. In whatever domain you are in, you will be far above the rest. Because you are blessed above the rest. Say after me, I'm blessed so that I can be a blessing. Say after me, I'm blessed so that I can be a blessing. Wherever you go, people will hate on you. You are the best. Can you be the best? You better be the best. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not about Harvard University graduation, no. You are the best because you have the spirit of excellence over your life. And you have a distinguished spirit inside you. That's the qualification of a boss. That's why N don't have a boss because the N is a boss. The N doesn't need a manager because he manages himself. You no need to be monitored because you have the spirit of excellence in you. And you have a distinguished spirit like Daniel over your life. Can you imagine if a church full of these kind of people? What do you think, Andrew? If our church is full of this type of people, you will not be here. I watched a Tamil movie a long time ago. I don't watch Tamil movie for your info, but this word is ringing in my ear. Ingyo pointing it. Where have I heard this? I don't know. But I heard it somewhere or watch it in a snapshot in a coffee shop. Something like this. I don't know who. I don't know those actors. Ah, I don't know. No, but they, it was like that. Do it again. Ah, that's right. I don't know who did it. But I watched somewhere these, these clips. Don't know what is it. Anyway, whatever bell. 
I'm not a Tamil movie fan, <coughs> but <coughs> but I saw this. Means if you know what what it takes to understand excellence and distinguish, you won't be here. You'll be in another level. Amen. You'll be in another level. The way you come to church will be different. Amen. Amen. The way you live will be different. The way you carry yourself will be different. You are royal. You belong to a royal priesthood, chosen generation, holy generation, holy nation. Amen. The way you carry yourself is different. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know you don't sit with commoners? People who are at the top always sit among the top people. You don't sit with the crowd. That's not doesn't mean you don't go out lunch with poor people. Eh? That doesn't mean you don't sit in mama shop. You only sit in some clubs. That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, there's an excellent spirit over your life. There's a distinguished spirit over your life. Come on. I say there's an excellent spirit, there's a distinguished spirit over your life. So everywhere you go, the hand of God is over you. Because of this, you have power over the realm. Write it down somewhere. Because of this, you have the power over any realm. R-E-A-L-M. That means you have the power to govern the atmosphere. The moment you step in, everything will align. Because you have the power. Distinguish excellent spirit. Amen. This will be your portion before I finish today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say this will be your portion. Because you know why? You don't have to be monitored. The ends have no chief, no boss, no manager. No one has to tell them what to do. Go back to TPT chapter 6. I'll finish with another two more scriptures. Then we can pray. Amen. He said, no one need to tell them what to do. The hands of no chief, no boss, no manager. No one has to tell them what to do. Do you want to be like this? This is the school of the hands. Nobody need to tell them what to do. If somebody have to monitor you and tell you what to do, you are still worse than an end. If you don't call, you don't come. If you are late, you don't call and let them know. You know what I'm saying? You just go on Tidapa attitude. You know Tidapa attitude? Malaysian style. Apalabang. Where are you? Uh, I, if, let's say I make an appointment with Timothy. Half an hour I'll be there. And then he reached the ready. Where are you? On the way. Actually still in the bathroom. Still in the bathroom. Come here. Right coming, coming. On the way. On the way where? I cannot hear the movement of the sound. Sound like bathroom. <laughs> make, a, make a sound effect. <laughs> Traveling now. It's a lie, you know. You know what I'm saying? In business, you cannot do things like that. You don't have excellent spirit. You don't have integrity. You're doing nonsense. You know what I'm saying? If I have an appointment, I like to be there at least 10 or 15 minutes earlier in front of my customer's house. And when I arrive there, I will ask them, can I park my car here or can I park somewhere else? These are all important gestures. Amen? When you walk into the house, you don't straight away look at the maid and say, is this your wife? Huh? You'll get one thumbling. You know? Or go to the house and say, hey, pretty, huh? The seal up, you know? You'll be kicked out. You'll be given a right hand fellowship. You don't, you don't say silly things. Excellent spirit must come upon you. How many of you want to be excellent? How many of you want to be distinguished? You don't have to be monitored. You know what to do. We don't have to ask. No, you see, uh, you teach the children from, from, the, from the house how we must go to the house of God. Prepare your envelope. Give an offering. Prepare them. Yes, we have an offering behind that cupboard box. 
I so told the team, you can put it there. We don't collect offering in the church. But that doesn't mean you need to be monitored. When people are offering time, then only you get yourself ready. See, whatever comes out, just give by faith. That's a very careless behavior. Then you will say things like, I've given everything to God. How much putting it? Proudly say, you know, whatever in my pocket I give. Actually, you can give 2,000. But in your pocket, whatever you hand grab, I give. Putting it. For God, you are treating him wrongly. This is bad behavior. This is wrong because God is not blind. Huh? He's not a bad. He can see what you're doing. Remember the, the woman, everybody was giving and Jesus was sitting at the offering box and watching. Ding, ding, ding. And this lady only gave two might. He said, all of you are liars. She's the only one that is given accurately. Go and read the scripture. Why do you think she said that? He said that because he knew all these people are hypocrites. Giving, huh? Ah, leftover. You think what? God's house is a place to give tips, is it? Like in America, tips is more than 10%. If you give less than that, they will curse you. Yes. In US, your tips has to be more than 10%. You give anything less, they will get angry. But to God, whatever comes from the pocket, just give. Oh, hallelujah, I've given already. Then you go around and give testimony, you know. I went to church last Sunday. The Lord prompted me to take everything from the wallet and give. But you didn't withdraw out and put in 2000 in your pocket, only got one ringgit. So you proudly testify. I went to church. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart to give everything in your heart. Only God knows you have given 50 cents. But you are proudly testifying. You think God is a liar, a blind, that he, can, he cannot understand you're lying? He knows. Don't lie to God. You know what I'm saying? You know? Give means give properly, give honorably. That's why all the children, young people learn in the house. How do we prepare to come to the church? How do we honor the house of God? How do we honor one another? That's why I told my son, Eliezer, last time, not now, last time, when he used to give me honorarium, he said, give me like that. I said, no, I will not receive. What do you mean one hand give? And then that time it's just, that this is your offering. I said, take it back. Why am I teaching him this way? Because it's important. How you honor God, that's how God is going to honor you. Or put the offering on the table. That, I put your, my offering ready for you on the table. On the table, who receive? That's not how we, we honor God. When we honor God, we do it accurately. I like the way Sumi does it. When she comes to the house, even the writing cannot be terbalik. You know? I observe this. It has to be properly given. God knows your heart. This is not religious. Eh? He's talking about the simplicity of how you connect to God. Yeah, but there are other people who do it religiously. I have one lady used to come to our church those days. We are all here. She'll come to church. I watch these things. I say, what a stupid thing to do. You think what? God is here? In this pulpit here? You know what I'm saying? These are the people that will not last long. Because these are religious acts, but nothing is inside. It's all external manifestation. God knows what's inside you. Amen? You can do all the religious mambo jumbo thing, but it won't last very long. Come on. Let's go back to here, then I'll end with two more scriptures. Are you getting this? He says what? No one need to tell them what to do. You will see, you will see them working and toiling all summer long. Why are they working during summer? So that during winter they can relax. They work, they do stockpiling their food. Very hot. In preparation for winter. Are you like this? Come on. Stockpiling for winter. Give me Luke chapter 22 and then we will stop in this passage. Now I'll pray for you. Luke 22, verse 25. Can we read? 
And he said to them, give me TPT. Luke 22, 25. Jesus interrupted their argument saying, the kings and men of authority in this world rule oppressively over their subjects. Claiming that they do it for the good of the people. They are obsessed with how others see them. Do you know, one of the reasons why we are living in bondage, because we don't operate like the ends. That's why the rulers of this world rule us. Come on. Do you want to be a ruler or the ruled one? Huh? Ruler or being ruled? The Bible says we are the head, not the tail. Amen. We will only lend, not borrow. Deuteronomy is very clear. We will be a lending company, not the borrowing company. I pray in the name of Jesus, this will be your portion. Nobody will be the borrowing company. You will be the lending company. You can give and give and you will not be poor. Oh, you didn't hear me. I say you will give and give for God and your pocket will not be empty. You don't trust me what I'm saying is up to you. Because it says the ruler of this world will oppress you. But your, God's people must rise above it. We are not the oppressors. We are the deliverers. Amen. Jesus interrupted and said what? What did he say? He said in the argument the kings of the kings and men of authority in this world. In this world. Are you of this world? They will rule oppressively over their subjects. Are you the subject? Are you the subject? Are you the subject? Can I ask you again? Are you the subject? I am not the subject of this world. No ruler of this world can rule over my life. I am above them. Sometimes God allows you to be like Joseph, to be under those, you know, those who rule over him, the prisoner. Remember Potiphar and the, the house. He went through all the processes, what uh, Marian was saying. The process we go through. Are you listening? We go through all that. But eventually, Pharaoh has to bow down before Joseph. Read the scripture. After the process, Mala, Pharaoh has to bow down before Joseph. The day is coming. They will bow before you. Amen. The day is coming, Abraham. You will not be just working for people. People will be working for you. That's what I'm saying. The ruler of this world, they are oppressive over their subject. But if you are an end, you are a boss on your own. You don't need to be monitored. Are you listening? You will rise above it. Marian, do you see yourself becoming school principal? Number two. Number three. Hey, no amen is coming. Do you believe or not? You must believe. Mom cannot be doing that forever and ever. Where's Kazia? I'm sure she's listening. Down says, you listen to me because yeah, you have the capacity to become a school principal. Enlarge your capacity. Amen. You got to start thinking like this. Otherwise, you will always be the subject. The students will bully you. Marion is saying, hallelujah, Lord. Listen to my prayer. I don't want to be the subject of oppression. Every day she come out from the, from the class, you give her a cake, she will finish it. Because she's lacking sugar. Low sugar. The children are sucking all the energy. She needs energy. I'm telling you, after school, you offer her any cake, sweet things you'll eat. I saw them the day. And for a break, they were eating, galloping them. Sugary things. Then I saw, my goodness. See what the children have done. They are the oppressed subject. Why well, you are laughing? It's the truth. Marian, am I telling the truth? See? I know. They are the oppressed subjects. So being a teacher is not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to handle the children, no. But if you have gained your strength and you rise above it, you are in authority. Nobody is going to bully you. Nobody is going to tell you what to do. Amen? Hey, when I go and do sales, huh, I don't look like a mattress cleaner. So I clean the people, this mattress come out. The other day they were asking me, hey, can you clean the other mattresses? I say, excuse me, do I look like a cleaner? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I did one bait, and then there was another bait. She said, can you do the one also? I said, excuse me, ma'am. We're only allowed to do one. Do I look like a cleaner to you? And that for a reason, they will buy from you. Because they know you don't lower your standard. We are not arrogant. We know who we are and what are we, what we are doing. You know what I'm saying enough. Do I look like a mattress cleaner? Do I look like a salesman? When we go to the house, we will say we are consultants. Is one level higher than salespeople. The day, I think long, long time ago, Ezrin asked me, out there is written, outside the shop, no salesman allowed. That means sales girl can. No salesman allowed. But if you are a saleswoman, then what? You know not. You will not be oppressed. I pray in Jesus name verse number 26 and then I want you to stand verse 25 26 I want you to read from amplified version then we'll stand and pray Jesus said to them the kings of the Gentiles have absolute power give me amplified version 25 26 let's read it one more time then I want you to stand the kings of the Gentiles have absolute power and lord it over them and those in authority over them are called benefactors but it is not to be this way with you. This is God's word for you. This is for you. Oh, you are not getting it. Maybe you should stand with me and then we pray. This is not for you. You are not going to be oppressed. You are your own boss. You don't need to be monitored. You have certain excellent spirit. You have a distinguished spirit inside you. That's why if I give you something to do, you will operate with the spirit of excellence. Nobody needs to oppress you. Nobody have to keep on asking you, asking you, asking you and feel depressed. No, you don't have to do that. If you know how to rise above it, hey, I'm telling you, you'll be like us. No need to be monitored. You know when to pray, you know to preach, when you need to strengthen yourself, when you know how to exercise, you know when to wake up, you know what to eat, you know when to say no. Come on, are you listening? Some of you, if I don't ask you to come for the Take Back Health channel, you will not show up. You will say happily today, nobody called me. Hallelujah. Pillow is getting more softer and nicer. Many of you have this problem and I don't know why. If nobody monitor you, nobody follow up, you don't show up. That kind of attitude is wrong. I pray that this will come to an end. I say that kind of attitude is very wrong. If nobody say anything, you won't say anything in the channel. You don't encourage people. You are just living in your own zone. That kind of thing is coming to an end today. I say to you, go outside there. Look at the building. I told you there's a tree growing. I don't want to see by next week the tree is there. If not, I will climb up and take it out myself. And don't you cry eh? and say, how come dad is doing? I will take the glory for myself because God will bless me for looking after his house. And you, if you come, I'll kick you out and say, don't you come and try to be in, interfere on in what I'm doing. Because I want to be blessed by God. Are you listening? Many of you have this problem. You are not pioneers. You don't execute these things. You wait for somebody to do, then you come. That's very bad. Don't. This will not be your portion. But this is not for you. On the contrary, let him who is the greatest among you become like the youngest. And him who is the chief and leader like one who serves. You must always look forward to be a blessing. Be a servant. Do you do that? Or you are waiting for somebody to bless you all the time? Be a blessing. Serve one another. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Increase our capacity today. So that we will come out from our own comfort zone and begin to serve you in the name of Jesus. There's much thing to say today but we know that this is enough because there's a deposit of heaven upon our lives in Jesus name. Lord let us learn from the ends, the characteristics of ends that we will not be lazy, we will not be sluggish, we will not need to be monitored, we will know what to do, we know how to be accountable. We don't have anyone to tell us to do, but we will do, oh God. We will work while there is time. 
we will follow what the prophecy has said that this is a season there's there's an excellent spirit required out of us the distinguished spirit is required out of us that we want to be aggressive company of people who want to move the earth find the earth so that what is in the heavenly place will come down heaven come down heaven come down right now heaven will only come when there are god's people down here who can usher in his presence in the name of jesus father raise us up to become a company of people like the ants don't have to be monitored don't have to be told what to do we will rise up oh god to become a strong company of people like the ants we will have wisdom we will have discernment we have understanding how to uh, uh, stockpile of food and prepare in the time of winter we know winter is coming we know the time of crunch is crash is coming we don't want to be sluggish we want to be prepared in this season called now we want to save we want to se- secure ourselves in you we thank you we honor your god raise up a company of people that none of our, our people will be sluggish none of our people will be need to be told what to do they will know what to do and they will know how to do it accurately for the advancement of your kingdom we honor you we bless your holy name and